Hey everybody, it's Josie. Welcome back to Cedar Creek Homestead. I hope you guys are enjoying your sweetheart's day, uh, that you're getting to be with those that you love. Um, I always enjoy getting to be with my Howie, and I miss him greatly, but I have a lot of fond memories, and he was always really good to get me flowers. I love flowers, love cut flowers, uh, but boy, are they expensive. And so, you know, the, the last year that Howie was with me, uh, Valentine's Day was rolling around, and I knew that he would get flowers. He always did. And so I was thinking about that, and I thought, you know, I would really like to surround myself here on our farm with things that um, flowers and bushes and trees that made me think of people and the love that I had for them. And so I made a request of him that I would get a rose bush that could be planted instead of getting cut flowers. And so that's what he did. He gave me the go ahead and we ordered a David Austin Rose uh, um, Lady of Shalott. And it, they're beautiful, old fashioned, um, big blooming roses. And so I can uh, look out my kitchen window when that thing is in bloom in the springtime all throughout this season and I can look out and I and it makes me smile makes my heart smile thinking of my Howie and uh, how precious that he is to me so I hope all of you take the opportunity to really um, just enjoy being with your loved ones this day it's been a nice day here it's been sunny started the morning started out uh, with uh, heavy rains but the rains moved out and the sun began to shine and I was so excited about getting to set out and make a video out in the sunshine I've just been craving the sunshine and the warmth uh, but the wind picked up and it is crazy windy outside um, where most of Oklahoma has been under a, a what not a winter advisory but a wind advisory and uh, they're right it's blowing and cr like crazy out there uh, beautiful but windy and so I knew that it was impossible to be out there uh, we did a few little projects today I got some more canning done I've been baking bread and I've got uh, chicken canned and chicken broth canned and some beans canned and then I decided to do a project with the babies while uh, their mom and daddy was away. I thought that it would be a good idea to uh, make some uh, footprints, you know, paint their little feet and hands and make uh, handprints and footprints of both of the boys. Uh, our goal is every month to do that, and so it was time for us to do the Valentine's handprints and footprints, and uh, boy, what a challenge to uh, I didn't really think it through very well to try to do it on my own as a surprise for the kids because it took a lot of work to try to hold the top, uh, hold the baby and paint his little feet and hands with non-toxic paint to get his prints and keep the toddler out of the paint and uh, from walking on my carpet and all. And, but we finally got the footprints and the hand prints made and got their little feet and hands cleaned up and uh, so they're all uh, busy watching a show together the little family and I snuck off here to the bathroom to to talk with you guys a little bit and I was thinking tonight that I wanted to talk a little bit to you about some of the things uh, that we've been seeing in the news and the thing that here lately that's been something that's been catching our attention is those balloons uh, you know, that a few weeks back we had the big balloon that went across the country and they shot it down uh, off the coast of South Carolina. And then we've had the other uh, three other balloons that they've had to do something with. And um, I, you know, they're debating on what these are. And the first one, um, you know, another country has said that that was theirs and it was a meteorological balloon and... Um, you know, that it got caught in the jet stream and so on and so forth. And the other three, they're not really sure yet what exactly uh, they were and who they belonged to and what the purpose was. And, you know, they even threw this out about the aliens and all of that craziness. And so I got to thinking about those balloons. And I thought, you know, all of the different things that comes through a person's mind about what could they possibly have in them, if anything, 
are they just spy balloons? Are they balloons that are carrying some kind of uh, something to release on our country? Is it something just, like they said, just um, something that's measuring weather patterns and the jet stream and all of that? Uh, or is it, you know, something uh, criminal or something that's dangerous or something that, you know, that they could possibly release in... Uh, you know, uh, like an EMP and take and take down our power grid or, you know, we just don't know. And the government's not keeping us informed. And, uh, you know, a lot of people were up in arms because the government didn't tell them anything um, for days and days. And because the balloons are in the news now, you're hearing stories of things that have happened in past history. Now, I love history. I love reading history. I love finding out new things. And um, there were some stories out from World War II that I was unaware of. And so I, when I heard about them, I, of course, I went and I read all up on them. And I thought it might be something interesting that you guys would like to know. These balloons that are going have been shot down over our country in different areas today is not something new. In fact, way back in World War II, the British used balloons and the Japanese used balloons. Now, the British um, used their balloons to wreak havoc on Germany and cause problems for the Germans. From what I understand, the balloons that they used had these wires hanging from them and it would catch the power grids and stuff or the power lines and cause the uh, power to go out and would cause other uh, fires and other things that the Germans had to contend with that um, uh, slowed them down some and caused some problems for them. In fact, they say the British uh, released thousands and thousands of those balloons. Now, as the war began to uh, turn in the favor of the British and the Allies, the balloons became less of a thing that they used and they moved on to other tactics. There were a lot of women that were in the Royal Air Force and they uh, were actually some of the ones that were uh, operating these balloons and releasing them. The British were not the only ones that used balloons during World War II. The Japanese, after Pearl Harbor, and then the United States got into the war and they began uh, to fight in the Pacific Theater and have all, uh, all the different um, battles and found themselves uh, needing something that they could attack the United States with. The Japanese didn't have any airstrips that they could use to attack the U.S. coastline. And any submarines that they used to attack wasn't really effective in attacking the West Coast. So they came up between uh, November of 1944 and April of 1945, they began to use balloons uh, to attack the United States. Their, their, uh, their goal was to attack here on the U.S. mainland, and so they began to uh, construct ways to be able to do that. Those balloons were a low-tech way of attack, and they were a way to to um, launch long-range attacks on us. They knew that they couldn't get to us uh, like they had during Pearl Harbor. They didn't have the same resources any longer, and so they their goal was to be able to strike at us from a long distance, and so they had to create these balloons um to be able to 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 follow through with their plans. History tells us that they released over 9,000 balloons into the airspace in that amount of time. Um, there was about 900 that, uh, that actually made it to North America. About 300 of those were in the U.S. and there were others that were in Canada and, and Mexico. Their goal was to cause massive forest fires and to terrorize uh, those that were here and to terrorize the American people um, like they had with Pearl Harbor. These balloons that they created were made of washi paper. I don't know what washi paper is, but it was made of that. And they had uh, gases inside of it. 
They were filled with hydrogen, and they had sandbags uh, on, on them, and they were designed that if their altitude got too high, uh, they got the balloon itself, the altitude, if they got too high into the altitude, they would release some of their gas and they would descend. And if they descended too far, uh, then uh, some of those sandbags would fall off and they would ascend back into the altitude. The purpose, <coughs> their purpose was to make it to the United States and then wreak havoc. Uh, by the time they got here, the, all the sandbags were supposed to have fallen off. They would release whatever was on board and then they would self-destruct. Now, some of the balloons were fitted with uh, incendiary devices, and, and some had bombs on them. Some of you may ask, uh, did, was anybody killed by those bombs? Well, unfortunately, the answer is yes. On May 5th of 1945, uh, there was a pastor, a, a young minister, and his wife. She was expecting a baby, and they took a group of children on a Sunday school picnic. And while he was parking the vehicle, um, his wife and the children went on um, exploring and doing their thing. And they came upon one of these balloons that had uh, crashed or had landed and had not detonated. And when they got to it, it did detonate. And it killed, uh, unfortunately, the children. And it killed the minister's pregnant wife. Before this time, they hadn't been told uh, that these things, that these balloons were out there. A few days after the balloons began to be launched towards the U.S., the U.S. military came upon uh, them. And there was some confusion at first uh, as to what they were. Uh, but they kept things quiet. After about four weeks, they began to come into the West Coast, and the military realized that this was indeed a problem, that it could cause widespread panic throughout the country, and it would, we would be playing right into Japan's hands. That's what they wanted. They wanted to scare us, and they wanted to cause widespread fires and those things. Well, the, the balloons were crashing all over, and they uh, were in, crashing into the ocean, and they were crashing in places, and nothing was happening. They weren't sure if they had biological or chemical weapons on them, and so the best thing they thought they could do for the country was to keep things quiet. And so they, uh, the Office of Censure, <laughs> the Office of Censure, I can't even say it, the Office of Censorship reached out, to the media and requested that they not report anything on the story at all and the media complied but then that fateful Sunday school picnic happened and it could be kept quiet no longer in the process of time because the military kept it quiet the Japanese abandoned the abandoned the balloon idea because there weren't any reports coming out of death or fires or destruction and there wasn't any reports of people being really afraid or terrorized by the balloons and so they thought that it was a failure and they quit it entirely. So uh, back in 2014 uh, in Canada they found a balloon that uh, hadn't wasn't uh, detonated and uh, last year in British Columbia, they found another one, and so these, some of these, uh, I guess, are are still uh, found occasionally. But there's not been any deaths since those at that Sunday school picnic. So tells me is there's nowhere for us to give up on preparing for our families, making sure that we're taking care of our families and preparing for those that lo that we love. You know better than anyone what your family is, has need of, what your family eats, what your family uh, consumes. I believe that we need to make sure that we have our basic needs taken care of. Food, water especially. That we have a strong uh, core of people around us that we love and they love us and we reach out and help one another. 
that we are strong in our faith, that we make sure that we are right with the Lord. Um, I have a peace in my heart and joy because I know who Jesus is. That's our main thing. And then we need to make sure that we are doing the best that we can for our individual families. There's no place, we keep repeating, there's no place to stop preparing for your family. Preparing, canning and growing gardens or buying things when they're on sale, things that your family will eat, that's just an insurance plan for you uh, when prices are higher or you're not able to get things. You're just ensuring that you're taking care of your family the best way you possibly can. And what better way uh, to show your family that you love them than them to be able to see that you're they're in the forefront of your mind and you're wanting to do the best you can for them. Okay, guys, so there's a quick little history lesson on those balloons. I have to admit, I didn't know anything about the British or the Japanese using balloons in World War II. And I found it very fascinating uh, to read about history and know that history repeats itself. This is Josie, guys. I love you. I really do. Keep looking well to the ways of your household. Enjoy your sweetheart day. And until next time, we're gone.